my name's Lisa Heenan, I'm a Director of Agrarians and today we're talking to Darren Doherty who is also a Director of Agrarians about his land planning work. Hello. Hi, how are you? Can you tell us a little bit about how did the Agrarians platform come about? Um, in 2011 I was invited to do a training for holistic management educators in Australia with um, Bruce Ward and Ian Chapman and a number of other people and the late Bruce Ward. And when I talked to Ian Chapman about the planning of the program, um, I asked him, because he teaches uh, key line and holistic management at TAFE, and I said to him, how do you teach it? And he said, well, I use the key line scale of permanence. I went, oh, that's very interesting, because I'd been teaching key line courses for a number of years, and key line, and I hadn't actually thought about it that way. I mean, I included it, but I hadn't thought of it. And so I taught that course, that was the first one I'd done, and it was really successful. Using? Using, yeah, using uh, Yeoman's, PA Yeoman's Key Line Scale of Permanence. And that really turned everything on its head. It was like I was hit over the head with a bat. Um, that here was before me this um, platform um, and process, but I just, had, and I'm a process person, and I just hadn't seen it, so I have. Bruce and Ian and all of those people to thank for that. Okay, so can you go through the Agrarians platform from 1 to 10 briefly for us? Yeah, probably look at Yeomans first. Um, Yeomans, um, P.O. Yeoman's um, in 1958 in his book, the, the Challenge of Landscape, first outlined the key line scale of permanence. And in that, he um, looked at um, trying to develop a, um, a, a list of a priority list, if you like, of how things can be and how you and why you wouldn't do th some things over the other. So he had climate, land shape, water. Um, uh, he had farm roads, farm trees, permanent buildings, um, subdivision and fencing, and soils. And thinking that each one of those things are all in a in a different um, state of priority and permanence um, so you know you would always look at water at first above looking at um, say fencing and or look at water before roads and so on so that was that was how it sort of when we looked at it um, after i'd done that course and being very influenced by things such as or methodology such as holistic management and a few others um, i thought, well, where does, where does holistic management decision-making fit? And so our platform starts with climate, like Yeoman's, but it's the climate of the mind that we're trying to in, um, work on. So climate is the first thing, and that's where we're looking at you and your enterprise and the um, government conditions, you fly there, um, government conditions, um, you know, regulations, etc. cetera. Um, we're also looking at uh, what kind of risk profile you have, um, both weather-wise and business-wise. What makes you happy? Um, all of those sorts of things are within the climate layer. Um, then we um, look at um, geography, so land shape, yeomans, us geography, a lot broader term. Um, we still look at what yeomans was looking at, and that's the a key line geograph geographic analysis and geometric analysis of the landscape and land shape. Um, but then we also look at um, what are the, what's the demographics of where you are, um, what's the psychographic of where you are, you know, what, what does your town have that's different to this town? Um, if you're, you know, they've all got different elements to them and different kinds of people um, habitate them and so on. Um, we also look at things like your proximity and you know this is an era where because of the advent of things like um, GIS and particularly Google Earth everyone can and a lot of data on the internet you can you can really do a lot of market analysis as a result thank you thanks to the um, thanks to all of that um, water is the next layer so the same as yeomans and we haven't really we haven't changed at all the order that yeomans had just changed some of the wording and the emphasis and with that we look at storage quality quantities that are required and then uh rich, you know what sort of storage types how are we harvesting water how are we reticulating water what's the network of pipe systems that you have and do we need an irrigation and where do you 
And where do you put things as far as water? And that's a really important development layer. It's really the first. The, the other two are more framing layers. And when we get to water, that's when we decide um, where we're going to um, put things, you know. So um, with that, um, we um, then come to access. So your, your access layer will follow your water layer. There'll be a little massaging as you go along because some things may just, you may, your access layer might push the water a bit, but we just try and keep things in that sort of priority. And that's where we're looking at access as opposed to Yeoman's Farm Roads is because we're also looking at things like internet access and telephony and all of that because that's all really important. But then to looking at things like uh, markets, access to markets, and then the the more conventional things of access of roads and tracks and trails, laneways, etc., that you would have on your farm. Um, next layer is forestry instead of yeoman's farm trees. And in that, forestry is a lot more encompassing as a layer. And that's the layer that we also include animals because animals um, feature in a farm landscape. They, they, and, you know, all animals, including ourselves. Um, have originally come from forests and so it's the layer that we consider that. Then what kind of layouts do we have? Um, do we have blocks of forestry? Do we have shelter belts? Do we have um, orchards? Do we have vineyards? And so on. Um, avenues, how do they all fit? And then also natural fo forests, how do we manage those systems and so on. Uh, then we look at buildings as number six. Yeomans had permanent buildings. We're in an era, you know, thanks to the people like uh, going way back to George Henderson in the UK and more recently uh, the Salaton family of the era of uh, portable buildings. So that fits within that layer as well. And then also things like uh, where you put your home. Um, so we consider in the whole that, you know, water will influence where you, well, geography and the climate will influence where your home might be. Um, and your other farm buildings, but um, so will water. You know, if you want to have a gravity water supply, well then, you know, you'd put some water reservoirs in a place that are going to give you pressure down to where your homes and buildings that use water might be, so you don't have to worry about pumping. And you do see that a lot of people get that the wrong way about. Like a, I've worked with a number of architects over the years and you know their focus is entirely on the built envelope and their relationship with the client client and precincts and all of these other quite important things but the lack of a holistic framework into which you put categorize the layer of buildings means that you might do things that then catch you later on such as having to have a be, be dependent on a pump to get all your water about so it's more about integrated, you know, you're putting in a road, okay, so how can I use that road to actually take water to a dam or a pond? It's more about an integrated design system. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're going to put a road in, um, well, the road is going to last longer than the building. Um, we can see, we know that from looking at the Romans, you know. Um, and that you will, but your road will be, the position of that will be influenced by the needs of the water layer. Um, so, and then once you've done that road network, um, then that'll influence, well, that and the water layer will influence where trees might go, um, which are ov obviously influenced by the, the um, geography layer. So, um, yeah, and so on. So that's where we, um, where we get to there. Um, then we look at um, fencing. So the fencing layer used to be subdivision. Now it's um, uh, fencing. And with that, we're looking at things like, you know, permanent fencing, yards, um, cross fencing, so um, perimeter fencing, etc., And then also living fencing and temporary fencing in this era of uh, electric fencing. And, you know, so many people using that to great advantage. You know, it allows us to really make a whole system a lot more portable um, and manage animals in a whole different way than what we did before. Um, next thing that we look at is soils and the soil layer is where we look at the uh, holistic management planned grazing as being a sort of operating system so within our platform um, and 
that tells us where things, well, where animals should be at any given time and what kind of activities we're going to, we're going to run uh, with the primary focus being that making that soil get better and better over time. Um, and then within that, looking at, you know, decisions about how much, you know, are we going to use and apply any minerals and fertilizers to make things better? Um, is that going to give us any net gain? Um, and uh, what sort of crops and so on that we'd, um, that we'd establish and, and manage. That's the end of the sort of integration with the Yeomans platform, the scale of permanence. Now we look at the additions that we've put in and that's where we look at economy as number nine. I've got an economy there because, you know, I can change my economy as we know, you know, we've been in business for 25 years. We know that, um, that you have to keep at it. Um, you do, do what you can to build investments and to get passive income over time, but you still got to work at things. And um, we're in an era now where with the internet, we can change our economies quite quickly, a lot quicker than what we can say, change our soil, which is the next layer up. And that's what sort of had me categorize it there. Um, you know, we can go and put something, sell something online very quickly and immediately we've got a change in our economic circumstances. Um, but it's also about analyze about about strategy and also seeing what part of the value chain we want to be a part of. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, farmers um, only are producers, and so that means that they're price receivers, not price setters, and that undermines their economic position considerably. They, you know, they they can't influence. You know, the commodity market. You would say in our platform is a is a climate issue. It's related to your geography, but it's the, it's the climate of the game. And uh, so if you're going to change that position, you've got to get out of that and or get more get more of your income coming from, say, selling locally. Um, but that takes takes people to make it happen. So, um, yeah, so you've got to... And time. And finally, we've got energy. And so with energy, we're primarily focusing on how can we increase the amount of photosynthesis that occurs and, um, and, then, and then building on that because that's the foundation of any enterprise. It's what feeds everything up. Um, you have to be blue before you're green and black. You've got to have water systems right so you can get the green and cash flow and to get black carbon and profit. So that's really foundational to the to everything above, um, and then we've also got to look at the strategies for the future. We won't think this, you know, we, we take for granted now that we can get fuel easily and we can turn lights on and get electricity pretty well universally in most places now, um, but that may not always be the case. And you know, the dynamics of energy markets and supply are obviously changing considerably right now. So what are your strategies so that you're more resilient and what sort of storage options are you going to be looking at as you know you can't talk about generation without talking about storage so um that's 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 the platform great thank you very much if you'd like to know more you can go to the agrarians website and i there's a a workshop an online training yep coming up yeah, I'm, I'm not really calling it a training as much. I'm calling it a, a farm planning uh, program because what we're doing with the Rex at rex.farm um, is over 10 weeks, uh, we've got an amazing team of we, is the uh, Regrarians team of practitioners, very experienced practitioners and farmers who are assisting us in guiding participants in that online um, program to design their own farm. Um, and it follows the uh, Regrarians platform. Um, so yeah, we're very excited about it and um, it's a really economical way to generate a practical and feasible and doable plan um, that meets where you are right now and uh, where your land's at right now. And that's, you know, we've got to have things that are achievable and that's, mm, that's realistic. Yeah, and realistic, yeah. Great, thank you. So if you want to know more, go to rex.farm or Regrarians website. Hope to see you online. We do. Thank you.